Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, we're gonna jump right in, no fussy mess. As you can tell by the thumbnail, I'm gonna teach you how to make a liquid bonbon today. Now listen, I didn't invent this, okay? But this is something I learned along my journey, so it's really easy. What I have here is a percentage of raw cocoa butter and also white chocolate. Both are very high quality. I will put a link in the description, but it's very important. I like to cryovac them, then get them into water. It's totally fine if it boils, but try to keep it at a simmer, okay? Next, we're gonna move into cherry. Now you can use any liquid you want. I just got this cherries from the farmer's market. It's a new cherry farmer that I wanted to try. Cherries are just coming in season, but look how beautiful these are. I mean, you gotta love California. Literally, we have the best produce, arguably in the United States. But anyway, I'm gonna show you how to use this cherry pitter real quick. You can get this off Amazon. It's about 10 bucks, totally worth it. But what's really important is don't be like me and go super fast and miss some of the ch cherry pits. All right, I think what's really important is take your time, make sure you get every single cherry pit out of the cherries because it does not like the juicer, trust me. And you will notice right here that I forgot a few. But anyway, we're gonna juice this, uh, these cherries. And um, <clears throat> I think what's really important is um, the moment this happens, you need to move really fast. Okay, not if you choose to use cherry juice, but you can use whatever you want. I, in the past, I've used um, alcoholic beverages like margaritas, uh, tequila. I've also used raspberry, strawberry. I've done everything, but this is a really popular um, like first course or a mousse bouche. Now, I juice the cherries and immediately I'm going in with the absorbic acid and, and you will see the color in this juice start to change. You see how it turns back to pink? That's what you want. You don't want it to be oxidized because then it tastes a little funny. Now, what I just used there is called a refractometer. And what I'm doing is I'm checking the sugar level in this liquid to make sure that it is able to freeze, okay? And that's very important. If you're using something with a high sugar content, if it's too high in sugar, it will not freeze, remember that. But it's really easy from there after that. So uh, again, I'm, I'm re-seasoning the liquid, just making sure it's balanced, a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar. But ultimately these cherries are very sweet. So it was actually read about 20 bricks where 20 bricks is good, but you don't want to be past like 22, 23, because then it won't freeze. Now, what I'm doing is I'm straining off the stuff and make sure you pass it through a shin wall. But other than that, we're literally gonna pour it into these little molds. And this mold, I'll leave a link in the description. It's $7 off Amazon, totally worth it, right? Now, you can tell this cocoa butter and this white chocolate are need to be pretty much emulsified, right? So I think what's really important is massaging the bag and then, you know, literally wiggling it up. But this is the reason why I like to do it sous vide because you don't wanna incorporate any air or else you'll be in big trouble. All right, so from there, after the, um, we went in the freezer with the liquid, we're gonna come back out and we are gonna put the spheres together, the half moons together, half sphere, whatever you wanna call it, together. I used a little bit of water with my fingertip and rub around the, uh, the flat surface and then put, put it together. And then it's really easy. So check this out, go back in the freezer, make sure the circles are very frozen. They have to be super frozen. Do not try to pop them out. You have to like do this the night before and make sure they're solid frozen. So here's our mixture. And I think what's really important is to know that the temperature for the ideal bonbon is gonna be around 90 degrees, okay? You do, if it's too hot, then the layer will be too thin. If it's too cold, then it'll be too thick. And trust me, you don't want it too thick, all right? It doesn't, it's really nasty. <laughs> it's like gross. So um, anyway, listen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip right in, right? So dip, swirl, release, and then drip the rest of the stuff off. And this, and I already know this is perfect. The shell is gonna be nice and thin. It's gonna be no fuss. I'm telling you, it's crazy. People love these things and I love them. And over the years, I've figured out a way to make them better and optimize them. But I think a lot of people make the mistake by making the chocolate layer or the cocoa butter layer too thick. So as you can see where I had the pin, I'm just covering that hole up. And uh, I wanna give you a pro tip here. You see that little liquid that's coming out? Yeah, you do not want that or else it will not, the liquid will not stay inside. So anyway, after that, you're gonna put them in the fridge to defrost. And what's really cool is check this out. The, they, um, as the liquid defrosts, the cocoa butter stays cold and it's like a shell. You see how thin that shell is and it's pure liquid. How I used to serve these in the restaurant is actually in a little mini shot glass. It was a perfect vessel for this item. And what I'll do is I'll put that right here. You can check it out. And um, you know, and what I did was I asked the guests to uh, just shoot it like a shooter. And the garnish on the bottom, what I like to use is something that is edible. So in the video, I'm using a little bit of pink peppercorn and also a little bit of salt. 
I think if you have something really sweet, it's very important, especially if it's the first bite or the bite before dessert, make sure you have a little salinity in there, right? Make sure the flavors pop. I think that's super important when you're doing a one biter. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed, man. I post two to three videos a week.